Good morning, stampers and crafters. Welcome to Tina's Crafty Ink Spot. In today's tutorial, we are going to be playing with foils, adding foils to your cards. And I'm going to show you a few different ways in which you can do it. And um, the benefit of that is one of these ways you're going to have the supplies you need to do it. So, and it's fun to do, it adds great shine and shimmer to your cards. I will tell you there's probably a dozen ways to do this technique. I'm just going to show you some basic simple ones. And I'm also uh, below in the video description or on the blog, you will see a PDF. And on this PDF is I've written down five different ways to do foiling and the instructions. And there's also another four that don't even have instructions. So here's five ways to do foiling. And we're going to do a couple of them here today. And we're just going to jump in. And this is our Valentine's blog hop. So to me, Valentine's means shiny little hearts and things like that. So that's what we're going to do. So the first card we're going to do is this one. And you see the, the beautiful foils on there. And this one, I'm going to show you two different ways to do foil. Okay. All of the supplies that we're using today will be listed um, below the blog post. Um, I will also try to put links to materials that um, I got like off of Amazon, like my uh, uh, laminating machine or some of the toner papers I found. So I will try to put links uh, of those also. So this one, since it kind of takes the longest, I thought we'd start with that one. And what I did is we used the Be Mine Hearts and you come out with one of the die cuts. Let me see if I've got the Be Mine. I've got so many items here around the small workspace. So let me see if I can find them. So this is the Be Mine um, die set. Look at all these dies. 16 dies come in this set. And there you've got stitched hearts. Um, you've got filigree hearts. These are beautiful. Little set of flowers there. Some nice little accents. You've even got a, 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 a border um, die. So it's a great set. So for this first heart, I used this large stitch die right here. And what you come out with is you'll end up with a stitched frame. And then you also have this little heart. So to get the foil on this little heart, the first technique we're going to use is Deco Foil has um, a product called their Transfer Gel. Now, the foils we will be using today are Deco Foil. Now, there are, are many others out there. Um, I don't have their names because I don't really use them, but if you look up foils, I, I'm sure you will find tons. Deco Foil comes in a variety of colors and there you get five very large sheets in this okay and it's a real thin foil and so they'll go a long way i think um i'll try to link to it but i think on amazon you can actually get a package of like five different colored foils at once so as you see i i have plenty i have more than i need um, here's even a couple more. Here's a really nice gold that's really pretty, and I think we'll be using this one today. So let me move these all out of the way. So with Deco Foil, they have a transfer gel. This transfer gel works like you would with your, um, like your embossing paste, okay? So you'll you'll have a little spatula, and I brought in uh, just one of my stencils. Now, when you're doing this, and you're going to put this transfer gel, or if you're using the liquid adhesive that DecoFoil has, 
make sure you are able to take your stencil and your products that you're using to apply it and put it uh, rinse it off right away just take it to the kitchen sink or bathroom sink wash it with a little soap and water come right off so today since I'm not going to be able to get up and run to the kitchen all I did is off to the side here is I have a pan of water and what I'll do is when I'm done I'll literally just stick this in the water so that it won't harden so you can do that too if you plan on doing quite a bit um, you, you know use your your baby wipes or whatever you have kind of just you'll want to clean it up right away so I'm going to show you how we stenciled or how we how I added a stencil to this heart so I have let me move our stuff out of the way here. So what I have here is our um, silicone mat. I love this. Just wipes right off. So I'm going to put my heart right on there. The other thing about the silicone, it kind of keeps your, your paper from shifting around. So you can just set it there. And we're just going to lay our stencil on there. Now out of all of the ways to do this, this one takes longer only because you have to wait for the transfer gel to dry. So I'll just show you. You're just going to pick up a little bit with your little um, spatula knife. And go right over your stencil. And just try to make it as smooth as you can. Which I find just kind of laying your knife flat. And going over and it'll spread out. So we're just going to make sure all of our little areas there are covered. And you can kind of see through the stencil to make sure your, your um, gel is flat underneath. You just kind of drag your knife. You can even tilt it at a little bit of an angle and just come across and it'll pick up the excess. Okay, we're just going to put that right back in the container. Put your lid on this right away so it doesn't dry out. And then we're just going to lift our stencil right off of there. And I'm going to drop this stencil in the little pan of water I have over there along with my uh, spatula. And that just keeps it from hardening. And when you first put it on, it's going to be white. So you have to let that dry. You can um, hit it a little bit, I found, uh, with your heat tool. Um, still takes it a while to dry. So plan on doing whatever your stencils are first and set it aside and let it dry. And I have one ready for us. So I'm going to move this out of my workspace. And by the magic of video, we have one that's completed. So when it's done, when it's dry, it'll just be clear. And you see it's just clear there. Okay. And now we're going to pick the foil we want to put on it. And I got this new one yesterday. Let's see, what do they call it? They all have names. It's called Rainbow Shattered Glass. So let's add that to this. Now you can use this transfer gel on any of your cardstock. I do, I don't know if the gel works on fabric. I know there's some stuff that you that you can apply these foils to fabric. So these come, I'm gonna pull them out for you. And you'll see how much you get. So they come in a big long sheet like that okay this is the front side this is the side you're using and this is the back side and there's five sheets of this so you kind of got to be careful it's super thin and you can use this as just the background if you want just glue that cut your piece the size you want glue it right onto your paper if you want and you can do it that way too so what we're going to do is I'm just going to cut off a little piece of this that will fit my heart. And make sure you save your scraps because you'll see 
here where scraps are going to be pretty handy for um, different things you're doing. If you just need a quick foil accent. So I'm just going to cut a piece off that's bigger than my project. And if my pieces are big, I kind of just roll them back up and put them in the tube. If they're smaller, I keep an envelope in with my foils that has my smaller pieces in it. Because, like I said, you can use these. So, so all I'm going to do is try to roll this back up and put it back in the, in the tube. Isn't that just beautiful? Even the backside's beautiful. So I just roll it up, put it right back in the tube. There we go. Okay, now this one, when you're using the transfer gel, you do have to use a laminator or an iron. Now, I tried it with an iron, but I only have a small little, uh, it's about this big, it's a little craft room iron. And I don't believe it really got hot enough, okay? So let me bring in what I do have, and it's extremely inexpensive, is this Royal Sovereign um, Laminator. It, I, I'm positive I paid less than $20 for it. And it's just a regular laminator. And then what you need to put this through, where did I do with it? Okay, it's here, it's here. Hold on. Bear with me. I thought I had a piece. What I did use is um, parchment paper. Okay, regular, cheap, non-stick parchment. You can use... Oh, there's my... I wondered where my little spatula went. You can use a piece of copy paper in this place. If you have a piece of copy paper, you're going to want to sandwich your um, item in a piece of copy paper. So all I'm doing is creating a sandwich here. I'm going to trim this down a little because I don't need all of that. Parchment paper um, seems to um, uh, kind of dissipate the heat better. Okay, So what we're going to do is we're going to take our Transfer gel heart. Okay, and this is the top side. You're going to flip your foil over so that your design side is up. Okay? And lay it on there. And then you're going to put it into your sandwich. Just like that. It's just in the sandwich there. And we're going to run it through the laminator. Now, you can do this. Um, I've seen it done without the sandwich. I'm um, a little too paranoid thinking that maybe it's going to um, uh, get stuck in there. So it's going to run it slowly through the laminator. Now, I heat up my laminator for at least... Your, your ready light will come on you know, fairly quickly. But I, I keep it heated up about a good 20 minutes. Let it let it really warm up. And you can kind of see when you open it that it's already sticking. Okay. And just for peace of mind, I'm going to run it through just one more time. Just to make sure. Just to make sure it heated up nice and the foil sticks to where it needs to be sticking. So keep your little piece of um, parchment paper because we can use that a couple of times here. So then I, what I did next, we'll bring in our card. And there we go. So let me set this aside again. And we're just going to open it up. You can let it cool a little. It doesn't really matter. I just kind of run my finger over it a little bit. And then you peel off 
it has a backing on it. So what you're doing is you're removing that back. Save this negative piece. Look at that. You could put that right there on a card. Uh, it's kind of hard to see on my space, but don't throw that out. That could work. And look how beautiful that came out. Look at that shiny. Now this one, the laminating paste kind of gives it um, texture. Okay. Some of the other techniques we're going to do today with the foil doesn't, um, it's, it's a flatter surface. Okay. I have a little piece of fuzz right there that got laminated in there. But there's our heart. I'm going to save our little piece of parchment paper there. And to get my frame to stay on my heart, all I did is turn it over, laid my heart in there. And I just took a little couple little pieces of scotch tape and made sure the frame and the the heart stayed together. It's just a little bit easier to um, mount your piece on your card if you're using the frame. Now you could have foiled the frame too if you wanted to, but I wanted the frame to coordinate with my cardstock. So I just put a couple little pieces of tape there to hold that together. And now what we have, I took the Amore from the uh, Parisian dies, and I cut this one out in just black foil, okay? So this is a pretty simple card. And now I'm going to show you the second technique to get foil on. Now this is the um, mat that I'm using. This is what I cut my card out. And this is going to lay over it so... We're just using our mat to make our heart. All right. So now, our second way, I'm going to bring in my little silicone mat. And this is Terran tape. This is your regular double-sided Terran tape. Any nice, sticky, double-sided tape will work for this. And what I want to do... Is I'm going to take and put just three strips of this across the bottom of my card. I'm just kind of eyeballing it, leaving a little bit of um, space between them. This right here is the number one easiest way to do foiling tape. So we're just going to add our three little lines there. And now I had put away, let's see if we have enough. I don't think I have enough. I don't. So let me grab, I want to use the same foil. You could use a different foil if you wanted to. So I'm going to grab that little piece out of the middle of there. Put it away too soon, I guess. So I'm going to take that piece out. And then you can pick what part of your foil you want on your tape. So what I'm going to do, we're going to burnish that down really well. Take your bone folder, burnish that tape really well to the paper. Okay. And I think we're going to do each strip one at a time. That way I can choose what color, of, what color part of the foil I want on there. So let me take off the, the protective coating on this first strip. Now it's okay that it overlaps because all I'm going to do is tuck that around the back of my card when I'm done. And it kind of just gives you that foil on the edge when you do that. So I burnished it really well and now I can't get the protective off. Come on, come on. You can do it. Oh, I picked up the whole thing. I'm trying to get the uh, protective uh, <laughs> protective strip off. I burnished it so well I can't grab a hold of it. There we go. There we go. I'm going to take that off. I think on the first one, 
Let's do it in blue right here. So all you're going to do is take a piece of your foil, lay it over that open tape. Now you could do all three of these at once if you wanted to, but I'm going to choose. So now I'm just going to take my finger and I'm going to rub it really well. If you can use your nail, it's, it's very durable. I'm just going to burnish that really well. They say you could use your bone folder. Um, I did find, I think I was using gold, and my bone folder seemed to have scratched the foil a little. So it works just as well to use your finger. And then just grab your foil. And peel it off. There you go. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So let's do our this seed now. You know why you can use scraps. So we're just using a little piece. So let's take our second one off here. I'm not having very much luck peeling up this protective. Remember the red double sided tape? I never could get the protected off that. There we go. Once you get it started, you know how that goes. So, I think this second strip, I'm going to go ahead and use this pink that's right here. Isn't this beautiful foil? Isn't that stunning? Alright, so I'm just going to lay that right over my tape there. Rather in. Now it's not going to stick to my blue. My blue's already covered, so it's not going to hurt it. Boy, I'm having a heck of a time peeling stuff up today, aren't I? Alrighty then. There we go. There's our pink. I think I'm going to do the blue, right? I guess I could have just laid the whole piece down. It seems like it would have did the three colors I wanted. There we go. And now I'm just going to take... Let's go right in between here. Get a little bit of that purple in there. So this, I would say, is the absolute easiest way to do the foiling, is the, um, the double-sided tape. Okay, there we go. Now I'm just going to take my, uh, my double-sided tape and just roll it around the back side there. And look what you have there. Isn't that beautiful? I just love shiny foil. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply, you could pop this up if you wanted to, but I'm going to glue it straight down. I'm a glue girl. You can use your favorite adhesive here if you're a tape girl, tape guy. Just use your favorite adhesive there. I'm going to pull it down just a little bit. And then we have our Amore. You could do this with foil with this. I'm going to show you how we do die cuts here in just a second. How you can foil your die cuts. I'm just going to put a little glue on here. And this is, I did this one in black foil. Black, um, our black foil paper. That's what this is cut from. I'm simply just going to lay that right across there. Glue it straight down. Okay, whoops. And pick it up with my finger, apparently. There we go. Let's bring in some bling. Got my drawer of bling here. Let's pull in some of these colors that are on here. I think I'm going to add 
I'll have uh, links to the different um, embellishments here. Put a pink one there. Purple one. Let's do one more pink maybe over here. And how about a blue? Do a blue right there. Very colorful. Very, very colorful. And now we have the piece of um this is lovely lipstick. And this is what I cut my heart out of. And it's um four by five and a quarter. And I'm just gonna glue this onto it. And we will move on to our next way to do foiling. So we have our real thin mat here. And we have a regular card base, Whisper White card base. And we'll lay it on there. And looky there. You have a very beautiful, shiny, foiled card. And there was two techniques. So let's move on to another one. Let's set that aside. So that one takes longer. That was the transfer gel. And the short one is your, your tape. So let's move this over there. Now this next one is this one. And I'm going to show you how you can use your stamps and get your foil on there. Okay. So let's. So what I have here is a, a real red card base um, with a top fold. And that's our card base. And then I have a stitched rectangle that we will be working on. And this is going to be for our foiled parts across the top. So now. Remember I said tape was a fast way? Well, here you go. If you have, this is called Sukwang tape, and it's a really strong double-sided adhesive. You could use your adhesive sheets here. Um, I did try Sizzik uh, adhesive sheets, and the only problem I had with those is is getting uh, it burnished enough for the Sizzix, uh adhesive to stay on there. So I found that this double-sided tape worked better. You can get this in all different widths. So you can get a quarter inch, eight inch. I believe this is a, hmm, this must be a two inch. So all I'm going to do is take a piece of that. Oops. Trying to get to my bolt my uh, sheet there. So I'm going to set this on here and I'm just going to lay my double sided tape right on there. And just to keep it from sticking everywhere, I'm just going to trim it off. Now, since I'm going to be using an intricate die with this one, I will lay the foil first. You can just die cut or punch this out, whatever shapes you're going to do. If you're going to do a heart, punch it, lay your foil on it, good to go. But we're doing this intricate die, and I want all these little tiny hearts to get foiled at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the foil first and then die cut. So let's go ahead and do that. Take off the uh, protective coating. And I have just a piece of rainbow, rainbow foil here. So I'm just going to lay that right over it. There we go. 
make sure you rub it on there really well. And now I'm going to run it with the dye. And this way all of our little hearts will have foil on them along with the frame. And save your little hearts, remember, because you can use, I use them as little embellishments on other cards. You'll see what I mean. There's tiny little hearts there. Let's run this through the machine. Okay, so now we have our die cut. We're just going to pop it out of here. You can save this and die cut other little tiny things with this. And let me bring in our die brush. I try to be gentle with my die brush over the foil. And get my little die out of here. Sometimes it helps to just poke through some of those little holes, those release holes. And you can grab a hold of it. I'm going to leave these little ones in here for right now. And then I can pop them out and put them in my container. So there we have our little hearts. Now the next way. Okay. And what I did with that one. Is laid it on there. Okay. So now we're going to do a stamped image. And foil it. Now there's a couple different ways to do this. The way we're going to do it is with just with your regular embossing powder. Okay. I'm going to use clear. You could use white if you have a white background or if you have a colored background you can use your colored. It, it kind of doesn't matter. But um, I did find using Stampin' Up worked really well because it's a uh, really good embossing powder you know it, it melts really well and it's fine so if it's fine it's going to melt easier and it'll melt smoother okay so now we're just going to bring in our stamparatus and we are going to do this silhouette image which is from Silhouette scenes, and I'm going to do this couple in a in their uh, umbrella. And we will just do it like normal. We're going to, well, I forgot my uh, Versamark. Hold on. So you're just going to use your Versamark powder, just the same as you would regular embossing. To mark it. Oh, do not forget to use your embossing buddy. Reason being, anywhere that there's uh, emboss or um, yeah, embossing powder spots, you're gonna get foil. So if you don't want, you know, spots that you don't want there, make sure you use your embossing buddy. I'm going to go ahead and ink that up really well with the Versamark. Stamp our image. There we go. That got good coverage the first time. And we're going to bring in our clear embossing powder. And this is just a scrap paper to catch my embossing powder. Make sure it's covered really well. And try to check for any spots that of embossing powder that shouldn't be there and wipe them off or you're going to get foil where you don't want it. I have a little, it's almost like I have a little glue spot right there. That's okay. It's going to probably foil right there. So now we're going to put this away.
and you go ahead and emboss it normally. Go ahead and heat set it. Okay, we heat set our image. I'm going to bring in um, my glue eraser, my regular little glue eraser. I have a piece of glue or something right here I need to get off. Because if I send it through, it'll, it'll have that on it. We might have a thin spot here. It doesn't look like I got embossing powder all the way on that one, but let's try it. So I'm going to do this in the same colors as we had. And I'm going to go ahead and just trim off a piece. That's about the width of our image here. You want it a little bit bigger. And now we're going to bring back our laminator. And our and our parchment paper okay I'm gonna trim that a I wanted um, see the blue on my foil I want that closer up by the top of my umbrella so I'm just gonna set that there I'm gonna trim off this excess Put it in our sandwich. Now, I've seen this done where you don't sandwich it. And, like I said, I, I'm not really brave enough. I'm afraid it'll get stuck in my laminator. So, now all we're going to do is put it in our machine. And let it draw it through. This is the quietest machine. I had a... Uh, Oh, I think it was like an old Scotch laminator made by Scotch. The noisy little guy. But I lost it. I don't know where I put it. So I've had this one about a year. Okay. Now I'm going to run that through again. As soon as it comes all the way through. I'm going to run it through one more time. At that point, at that point, you probably could run it through without the parchment. If you're using copy paper, I would definitely suggest running it through at least twice. That way, you make sure that your um, embossing powder is remelting, and that's what's happening. The embossing powder is melting, causing it to adhere to the um, foil. Now, the other thing that would work on this, I don't know if you remember back in the day, Stampin' Up! had a powder called Heat and Stick. This would work for foiling, except for the problem is, with Heat and Stick powder, you got to be quick. So as soon as you heated it, you had to stick what you were going to stick right to it. So you really wouldn't have a lot of time. But if you have Heat and Stick powder, or still have it, this is really old. Um, you can use that. It will work with this. So there's another way you can do it. Let's check and see how this turned out. I'm just going to rub that in there a little bit. You can kind of see where the foil has stuck to it. It's a little hard. It's so colorful. But let's see how we turned out. Look at that. Remember I told you I had that little corner didn't have embossing powder on it? But look at that. It's a nice, smooth finish on that one. Okay. So now all we would do, let's put that aside. So now all I did is I took my image. 
I took a few of the little hearts that came out of the foil die cut here. I scattered them around with the foil that came out of those hearts and added a couple hearts in there. And there you go. And then I, um, I did actually black emboss this sentiment from the set. It is in this um, silhouette set. Together is the perfect place to be. Seemed like the perfect Valentine's. So there you have two more ways. We did the tape and we did uh, clear embossing powder. And you can see how smooth the clear embossing powder turns out. It, it's really pretty. This one didn't seem to come out as smooth. I don't think I... Uh, I don't think I had a nice coating of um, embossing powder on there like I should have. I think it was a little thin, but play with it, okay? So it's gonna it's gonna um, work differently depending on you know your embossing powders. So now I think the last one is another super easy. Um, it's it's probably the go-to way. They have a product that is called um, toner paper, okay? If you have a printer that prints toner, which is normally a, a laser jet printer, it can only be a toner printer. If you have a toner printer, you can actually print out any design you want on a piece of cardstock or paper and foil it because the, the foil will stick to the toner. So if you have a printed image, you know, say it's a, something you found on the internet and you print it on your printer or you went to a print shop, Kinko's or wherever, and asked them to do a toner print, a laser jet print, then your foil would stick to that print. My printer is not a laser jet, it's, re it's a regular dust jet, but I found toner sheets. So you can, and they're made just for these foils. Now I got one pack of toner sheets that has a peel and stick backing on it. And it comes with two pieces and they're what, eight and a half by 11. Um, and I got the ones with some peel and stick so that that way I could do um, die cuts or words and be able to foil them. They also have available, you can find toner sheets that are just regular heat activated toner sheets. There's no adhesive on the back of them. This one has adhesive on the back and we're going to use that one. So what I did is I cut a piece of it the size I need and it's it's fairly thick. It's a you know nice size kind of cardstock type toner. And what I want to do with this one and this is the one that has the adhesive back is I want to take my detailed hearts die. Okay, this one it's going to be perfect. So if I wanted all my little hearts to be die cut, you know, so that they're all tonered, all I'm going to do is I'm going to lay foil directly onto this, run it through my machine, and then I have a foil piece that I can um, die cut. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So we're going to bring back our... Now the toner sheets, you do need a laminating machine or a... I think there's a, like a heat press machine out there. I don't remember the name of it. Okay, what did we do with our toner paper? There it is. I mean our parchment paper. So I want this whole piece to be foiled so that I can die cut it. So all I'm going to do is lay it in my sandwich here, and I'm going to run it through. Now you could die cut it first and just run your die cut through, but I wanted, when I die cut it, I want all those little tiny hearts. And I'll show you what I did with some of those tiny hearts while that's going through. First one I did, I die cut a butterfly. And just kind of made a little uh, rainbow butterfly with the little hearts that were left over. So keep your little hearts. You can use them for things. And you can use them for, you know, uh, this one is the tape method. And the um, 
tape method there on those stitched hearts there. Okay. So foiling is just fun. This one, uh, from the looks of the texture, is the tape method, where I just uh, laid tape and did my foiling. Here is my toner paper. So I'm going to run that through one more time. I like to run it through twice. You probably don't need to, but I kind of do it anyway. So why that? And then we're going to, I'm going to take this awesome die. I just love it. It's called Detailed Hearts. And I'm going to run it through the die cut machine. And you can, it just makes one simple card. I mean, look at that. I just didn't, I uh, love you. You could put any greeting here you want. I just kind of uh, die cut a love you and did a little frame around it. But look at those hearts on there. That's, oh, love. Okay, so now we have our foil covered piece of cardstock. See? Solid. So let's go ahead and die cut our hearts. I'm going to run through the die cut machine real quick. And I'll show you what I mean by all the little hearts. So I would probably use my little die brush here. But here we go. Let's see if I cut all the way through. Make sure I cut all the way through. I'm going to grab the die brush. Because it is a little thick, so I'm gonna, I might run that through one more time. You could still see just a couple little spots. I bet it'll come through, though. I bet it will. I usually just take my die brush. I'm going to go through the back side so I don't scratch my foil with the brush. See all the little hearts you're going to end up with? Just grab a little jar. Keep your little hearts. And it looks like it's going to stick on here pretty well. Okay, I'm going to do a little more detailed work on that. But anyway, you end up with this. And that's the hearts we have here. And that's it. So today you learned... Let me set that aside. So today you learned how to use toner paper for your dies. Now you can use the toner paper on any of these. Okay. I like using the, the adhesive toner paper, especially on the intricate dies. Okay. This one, we used clear embossing powder, any embossing powder, or your double-sided tape. Our next one, this one, we used our transfer gel and a stencil. Now, you might be able to use this transfer gel with a sponge on a stamp. Personally, I know people do it. I didn't want to get this gel onto a stamp and not be able to get it off. I mean, if you do use it on your stamps to stamp an image, and then let it dry and um, run it through the laminator. Make sure you clean your stamp really well. You don't want to ruin your stamp. I, I'm not sure it would. I'm uh, just my suggestion. And then we used the regular um, tear and tape to create some lines. You could do, and this is quick. So if you just want a couple little foil accents on a card, you know, do a couple diagonals and add something, a uh, little bit of shine and shimmer to it. There you go. Now this one, we die cut using the um, toner sheets. And here is just a couple hearts that I used some double-sided tape on. Here you can use what's came out of your heart dies. Remember all your little colored hearts and create designs with them and end up with a really cute little idea there. You can do really fine, you know, 
it's this, these right here are what were around this. So I had those left over. They had foil on them, added a couple strips of foil in different colors that coordinated with my DSP. And there you go. Pretty simple going. So that was today's foils. I think that's uh, several ways we showed you. In the description below, like I said, I will include a PDF that has at least five different ways to do foiling. And on the bottom of that is also uh, about four different other items you can use to do foiling. So I hope that was fun and you go get some foil and play with it. It's it's inexpensive. It comes in, in so many colors. It's, it's fun if you just want to add accents or you want to do something detailed. But I hope you had fun today and please keep going on the blog hop. These ladies have done some amazing projects for you and be sure to comment so you'll be entered to win a prize. I hope you have a happy stamping day. Bye-bye now.